Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Great Debate. Today, our topic is, Is Religion Losing Its Grip? And in order to discuss this with us, we have three people who are all considered to be leading experts in the subject of religion and its role in the wider community. Firstly, Father Jerry O'Malley, a Catholic priest from Sydney, who is best known for his outspoken views on the introduction of the practice of male circumcision into the Catholic Church in order to protest the preponderance of the practice of female circumcision in certain non-Christian cultures. Secondly, we have Chandaputra, a Buddhist teacher and monk from the United States of America, temporarily residing in Australia, and who has written some best-selling books on the subject of abandoning the idea of the self in order to form more emotionally healthy and meaningful relationships with other people. And last but not least, we have Ross Travers, president of the Australian Atheist Association, who is currently involved uh, in some research with neuroscientists at the University of New South Wales, who are trying to prove that a belief in determinism improves one's sex life. I am Robert Black, President of the Society for the Elimination of All Truth, and I'm going to act as the host and moderator of this discussion. So, I might open with you, Father Jerry. You have long spoken of the need for the Catholic Church to make fundamental changes if it is to survive in the 21st century. You say, and I quote, the church is dying. Young people are leaving in droves and are not coming back. The number of people entering the priesthood is dwindling and the church is becoming increasingly incapable of looking after its flock, even though it, too, is dwindling. And it's the same with nearly every branch of Christianity. In fact, it's not too much to say that, apart from some of the fringe fades which are still experiencing some growth, Christianity is in real danger of dying out as a major religion. Now, this is a very serious statement to make. Could you please expand on it? Thank you, Robert. Yes, it is serious. I've long recognized the need for Christians to be more accommodating of the trends and values of our um, modern society, or else face extinction. The fundamental problem, you see, is this. Most of our parishioners are elderly and will soon die, and my concerns revolve around who will replace them. The younger generations are not coming through as they once had in the past. For some reason, young people are being turned off Christianity and are going elsewhere for their guidance. That isn't necessarily a bad thing, though, is it? Uh, I mean, if the younger generation are finding other ways of uh, putting a halt to their thinking, then what's the problem? Of course. Uh, I can have no argument with you there, Robert. Uh, if our sons and daughters are indeed finding other means of destroying truth, then good luck to them. Uh, far be it for me to stand in their way. However, um, I'm not entirely convinced that these other means are as effective as the good old-fashioned Christian life. Yes, but... Need I remind you that uh, Christianity has always been a strong opponent of truth and has done more than its fair share in ridding the earth of thinkers. Agreed. But what about the argument that Christianity has had its day and now it's time for the community to discover new ways of fostering brainlessness? I mean, there are the New Age philosophies, for example, or the taking of heroin or the liberation of women. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, the thing is, we have a tradition going back thousands of years, and it's a tradition that has been tremendously effective in annihilating people's minds. I honestly don't think it has an equal in the world today. If anybody questioned the word of God, for example, we threatened them with um, eternal flames of hell. And if that didn't pull them into line, well, that was no problem. We simply burnt them at the stake. Yes, but... Those sorts of practices, effective as they may have been, I mean, they're hardly appropriate in this day and age, are they? Of course. Uh, but the church uh, also makes use of other strategies, you know. For instance, um, it did everything it could to swamp people's minds with useless concepts, crippling them with confusion and fear. It recruited brilliant young men 
to its theological ranks and used them to persuade the masses that their best course to adopt in life was to fall on their knees and beg for God's forgiveness. The church poured enormous resources into the creation of beautiful cathedrals and uh, exquisite music in order to seduce the intellectuals and poets. Truly, no stone was left unturned in our efforts to cleanse the world of consciousness. It was a full-on, unadulterated assault on the individual, and as you can see from the modern world around us, it worked extremely well. For sure. So how do you stop the rot then? How does the church deal with its decline in popularity? Well, this is a good question. Um, I can only speak for myself here. Uh, everyone has their own ideas on this one, and uh, who's to say that they're wrong? But um, I've given the matter a lot of attention, and uh, my feeling is that in order to bring young people back into the fold, we have to create a product which appeals to them. I certainly can't argue with that. Right. Um, so I think it's time we let go of some of the old archaic traditions and instead embrace some of the more modern and progressive paradigms for coping with the world. For example, I definitely think priests should get rid of their dog collars and, in fact, they should get rid of their entire religious garb and stop being referred to as father. The whole bit. Um, we should dump the whole lot and be done with it. Uh, that would definitely be a step in the right direction, I think. Uh, the whole religious paraphernalia which surrounds the priest at the moment only puts up a barrier between himself and his parishioners. That's a bit radical, isn't it? Yes, well, young people just don't think that priests are cool anymore. They think Madonna and Prince and the screaming tribesmen are cool, but not Catholic priests. Perhaps they should grow their hair long or put out pop albums and... Uh make YouTube video clips of themselves prancing around their rooms like uh, fruit bowls in heat. Exactly. You've just hit the nail on the head. That's exactly where we should be heading. We should... I thought I was joking, Father. It's not as crazy as it sounds. I mean, the church has always utilised and taken advantage of popular music. Why should today be any different? Uh, there's nothing wrong in being fashionable. No, no, of course not. Also, we should encourage more women into Christianity, especially into the Catholic Church. Um, I'm all for women becoming priests, for example. Now, some people argue that by ordaining women priests, the Church would have its ability to appear authoritative, uh, seriously weakened. But really, I think this is an irrelevant argument. I mean, as everyone knows, the Church has lost that particular quality long ago. Uh, you see, what people within the church have to accept is that the glory days of yore have completely disappeared. It's time to move on and uh, incorporate new ways of dealing with things. Uh, it need not be as bleak as you might think. I, for one, believe the future could be one of the most exciting and productive periods in the church's entire history. Uh, with the uh, advent of women priests, for example... Feminine values will take on more prominence and uh, this, more than anything, will destroy the dreaded truth we all hate so much. I'm not sure I want to go into that one, actually. What about you, Chandaputra? Does Buddhism face similar problems to those of Christianity? Well, <clears throat> first off, let me just say that I can easily advise Father Jerry on how to stop Christianity's decline in popularity. And that is, they should ditch the concept of God altogether. Uh, I don't... Um... You see, the fact is, God is no longer a useful tool in paralyzing people's minds. It's as simple as that. I'm sorry to be blunt, but that's the way it is. Interesting. And why do you think this, Chandabudra? Well, it's obvious, surely. No one believes in him anymore. Most people regard God as a kind of fairy tale figure best used to soothe the children at bedtime. I mean, honestly... How can anyone belonging to a modern technological society of the 21st century possibly believe in a fantasy invented by an illiterate agricultural society a full 3,000 years ago? No, I don't know what... Um... Please, let me finish. You've had your go, now it's my turn. I believe the whole question turns on the point of credibility. As we all know, the most effective weapon in the fight against truth is the half-lie. Indeed, 
The nearer a lie resembles a truth, the better it is able to do its job, that of deceiving the mind. Quite frankly, I think it's high time you Christians bite the bullet and simply accept what has long been obvious to everyone else, namely that in the face of modern science with its billions of galaxies and endless space and its sophisticated theories of evolution, the concept of God has become ridiculous. Only children and fools could still possibly believe in it. But, Chandabudra, if what you say is true, then what do we replace it with? Or what safeguards could we implement to prevent people from injuring themselves with thought? Well, naturally, I think people should turn to Buddhism. You see, I'm not advocating that Christians give up religion. In fact, I don't want anyone to give up religion at all. I simply urge them to consider Buddhism as a viable alternative. It is a religion which fulfills every function of Christianity, both societal and psychological, while at the same time being a great deal more believable for the modern mind. I guarantee you that the Buddhist teaching is a magnificent half-lie, one that will take four or five centuries at the very least to expose. Wow, that's certainly a big claim. Can you back it up? Look closely at its virtues. Buddhist cosmology bears a strong resemblance to the cosmology of modern physics. There are already many people saying that quantum physicists and Buddhists are pointing to the same reality. Marvelous stuff. Furthermore, Buddhist philosophy articulates a universe which is continually changing and evolving. This is an outlook which happens to be very fashionable at the moment, and it also fits in well with the current scientific theories of evolution. Now, just to place all this in some sort of context, I have been assured by some of our leading scientists that most of modern physical and biological theory is firmly entrenched and that it is virtually inconceivable that theories like quantum mechanics and Big Bang cosmology, for example, will be overturned in the near future. <laughs> oh dear, well that's certainly comforting. What a laugh. Um, everyone knows that these scientists are changing their theories every couple of years or so. It doesn't matter. Buddhism is flexible enough to adapt. The point is we have no need of a god in order to carry out our responsibilities to humanity. Buddhism possesses a far more brilliant means of producing mindlessness, ones which do not require insulting people by asking them to believe in a super fantastic being in the sky. Take the practice of meditation for example. We simply tell people that the quickest way to nirvanic bliss is to empty the mind of all thoughts and lo and behold off they go with a burning zeal to become as thoughtless as possible. I tell you, the simplicity of it is breathtaking. Well, uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't want to denigrate your religion, of course, but I hardly think that meditation is sufficient on its own to destroy consciousness. Well, it's a pretty powerful technique. There are millions who swear by it, and of course, we do use other measures as well. Like any other self-respecting religion, we encourage people to immerse themselves in complex and meaningless ritual, to chant and pray study volumes of intricate scripture, to lose themselves in devotional music, and so on. So I wouldn't worry if I were you. We do impress upon people the need to practice all the usual time-honored techniques of mind destruction. That's good. However, the fact still remains that under some circumstances, some religions are far more credible than others. I mean, it's a simple fact. Look, don't get me wrong. Christianity has done a wonderful job in the past. I'm the first to admit it. It has been incredibly effective in muzzling thought. But we have a duty to recognize the reality before us and accept that Christianity's reign is over. It is time to replace it with something more appropriate for this day and age. Like Buddhism. Yes. The two religions are very similar though, aren't they? Absolutely. This is why I say Christians should welcome Buddhism with open arms. All the essential elements of Christianity are present within it. We have our own Bibles and priests and saviors to submit to. As well, there are lots of color and ornamental sideshows which should appeal to those who love the theatrical side of things. There are monasteries for the Stoics and plenty of charities to tickle the altruistic. I assure you, a Christian can experience all the thrills of his own religion, but with the added bonus of it being intellectually respectable in our modern scientific age. No longer will he have to cringe when announcing his religion, and that in itself has got to be a good thing. Can I just say something? I was actually just going to bring you in, Ross. As president of the Australian Atheist Association, what do you say to all this? Well, as far as I'm concerned, the whole discussion has so far been a total waste of time. You're all avoiding the central core of the matter. 